Yeah, so like before I would do it over Zoom. And you know how yeah. like it's so pixel pixelated if you record For your sure. own screen? Yeah. It becomes a pain, right? Yeah. Okay, so hold on. Let me get an intro here. We are, this is episode 24 of the Bears Week podcast. Uh, today we got Cal Mills, an accountant, a uh, content creator from Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I'm not too far away from you, bro. How you doing? Yeah, doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man. Um, so I don't think I told you this, but I usually like to uh, tell people a little story about how I come across their work or how I, I come across your channel. Yeah. So I've been, I've had this itch recently of learning more about like personal finance and real estate. And I talked to um, a girl on my last episode about real estate. Cool. And then I came across uh, your YouTube channel. And you had a couple of videos about accounting and personal finance. And then what really sparked my interest was you had a video about Naval Ravikant, mm, um, mm -hmm. you know, the angel investor. And that yeah. guy is literally one of my heroes and one of my Same. idols that I follow religiously. And I like I look yeah. up to him in so many ways. And he just uh, he's such an inspiring person. Um, how, how did you get into uh, Naval's work? That's a really good starting point, actually. I had uh, I haven't thought about Naval in a minute, but uh, <laughs> he, I honestly would credit him for me starting my my channel. I read a tweet of his. You know how he has those tweet storms, yeah, on on Twitter, and I came across one of his tweet storms um, at some point, and and one of his tweets is something like, "If you're not, it has something to do with content," and he's also talking about like software engineering, and he says something along the lines of like. If uh, it's something about leverage and sort of in, infinite leverage, if you're and, and if you're not a software engineer, you should create content because the ability to scale it, the cost is almost zero. Um, and so, I'm not a software engineer. I'm an, I'm an accountant by trade. And so I thought like, I've kind of had this itch for a long time to make content. And after reading that, I was just like, if if I live to the end of my life, I will that will be one of my regrets if I don't give content a crack. You know, if I if I don't uh, seek to, to create something and then kind of, uh, especially during the pandemic, really kind of came into YouTube and everything. And then I was like, man, let's just give this a go. So yeah, mm, that's awesome. Definitely, he's, he's an incredible human being. Yeah. Yeah. He has this interesting belief where he thinks that robots should be doing the nine to five and that human beings should be out doing creative endeavors and creating, yeah. you know, interesting creative things like yeah. making music or making art and yeah. just being an entrepreneur and doing things that you love. And yeah. he kind of has this idea that if you can kind of do work that you love and you can mm. leverage your own work because it's not really work. It's like your yeah. passion, right? If you're doing something creative yeah. that you love to do and yeah. you have this like this amazing, I don't know, I don't want to want to call it a resource, but it's like this amazing thing that you can do if you can just kind of escape from the whole nine to five thing and kind of find mm. something a passion project or anything that you love yeah. like that's one of the yeah. best things to do with your life right yeah yeah that's uh i think everyone has gotten stuck in a job before that they just really hate or you just feel stuck in life in general um and that's something i've really been riffing on a little bit in re recently in some videos and I think now I'm entering a stage of my life um, in certain areas. I think you always kind of have those areas that you might feel a little bit stuck in. They're always kind of changing and, and whatnot. But um, when you, the ability to build something, this is kind of like Naval is very into this as well. Like building something in life is one of the most rewarding sorts of endeavors. So I think that a lot of us, it's easy to get stuck in, in a situation or a job or a relationship or, or something along those lines where you aren't actually – um, feeling like you're building anything significant, it's not heading anywhere. Um, and so, if you can sort out between your career, your personal side hustle, or uh, your your relationship as well, if all those if, you, if those things are feeling like they're building towards something, uh, that's just um, I don't know anything that can replace that feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And even like some of the some of his thoughts about like even just happiness. I feel oh, like yeah. people take those things for granted. And, and just the simple idea of ha being happy is such yeah. a hard thing that people yeah. struggle with achieving, right? Yeah. It seems very, very basic, right? And very, yeah. like, fundamental, like happiness. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, right. like, I, I'm happy. I watch the basketball game. I have a lot of friends. But yeah. deep down, are you really happy? That's, like, that, that key question, right? And I feel like a lot yeah. of people kind of struggle with that. I think that's totally legitimate. I, I think... Yeah, I think I could probably say we live in a culture that maybe 
doesn't. I think we struggle to um, really identify our own happiness and also like take hold of it. Like I, I think we struggle prioritizing it properly. Like I, I it's a bit strange to say um, like that. My number one priority is to be happy, um, even though like. Maybe we should say that. Like, I, <laughs> I think that that would be a little bit more, uh, I don't know. I think we'd lead, lead some more satisfying lives, perhaps. Which is to say that you should, there shouldn't be some level of suffering or some level of struggle to get where you want to go. But you need to have the right balance. And if you're perpetually unhappy, like, what does Steve Jobs say? He has a quote about that where he's like, if you wake up too many days in a row and you're, and you're looking in the mirror and you're, and you're hating up, you know, what you're about to go do, I'm butchering this quote, but he's like, you, you, you mm-hmm. must make a change. Um, and I do, I do think we should prioritize happiness, and that's, that will be a journey, I think, for many people, for sure. Yeah, of course, especially like if you talk about happiness in like the workforce, people are going to laugh at you. Like they're going to think you're some hippie or figure they're going to think yeah. you're stupid. Like, oh, yeah. you have a good job. You have benefits. You have a pension. You know that you should be happy. Well, right. But like, what if you're doing something that you hate right? yeah, and you're right. miserable? Right? right. Then is that even like worth it? I feel like so many people struggle with this problem nowadays. Oh, my God. Yeah. So many people. It's a huge issue. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're really getting right into it here. Uh, I think that. This is something that I definitely dealt with. Like so, so prior to accounting, I actually graduated in 2017 with a political science degree. Um, and this could be a whole separate podcast in and of itself. But <laughs> the uh, we've all heard the advice: do what you're passionate about, right? Like mm-hmm. go follow your passions. And I was in school, and like I just happened to like political science. I liked. Um, Politics and sort of, especially like political philosophy, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, and then I was like, oh, I guess I'll just get a political science degree. Like, but one thing I never did in school when I was studying that was like look at job postings or job boards. There's no real postings for like political scientists, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I ended up going back to I, I worked in marketing for two years after that, and then uh, kind of realized I really kind of wanted to change. Went back to school for accounting, and, and here I am. But I think maybe my position now instead of following or doing what you're passionate about I think my theory is passion comes as you become more proficient in something Mm. uh, in in general so uh, at the beginning it doesn't feel great but as you become better at something I think oftentimes we get more passionate about it oh that's interesting yeah I, I watched your video when you were talking about um going to school for a, i think you called it paul paul sci paul sci or something oh yeah like poli sci yeah, that's, that's, yeah that's yeah that's what lingo. you call it yeah that's what you call it when you're when you're in the <laughs> in the inn yeah yeah in the inn yeah. yeah dang so you finished so you so you essentially gonna have what two degrees so like what type of um yeah like student loans is that like that must be crazy in the u.s right yeah they can they can stack up quick um, thankfully, kind of spreading it out uh, over periods of time was definitely helpful. And I, I, I had assistance from my parents, which is massively helpful. Mm, that's um, good. And being in the United States, I feel like uh, if you don't have assistance of some sort, like it's absolutely crushing. And that's, a, that's another topic we could jump into as well, just like education and, and what's going on with that, uh, especially crossroads of like content creation and maybe maybe what's going on there. like. I think I used to think that you really needed a degree. I don't know if I still think that. I, I think I think I wish that I had looked at some other options earlier on. Like if I was at, if I was 18 years old and someone was just like, "Hey, you should spend two years building a business." It doesn't even matter what it is. Like start a lawn mowing business or or uh, just whatever's at your disposal at 18 years old. Like that would probably also be a very rewarding experience. But I jumped right into education, and I guess here we are. Hmm, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. over here in Canada, um, people are yeah, always complaining like? about the prices of university and tuition and books. But then sure. I'm always like, look at the prices in the U.S. It's yeah. worse than what we yeah. pay. Like, what yeah. are you guys complaining about? And I and I try to right. think about young people in the, in the United States, and I'm like, how are they ever going to get ahead in life if they're just getting like a hundred thousand dollars in like student loan debts, right? Yeah. And they're just being forced into i don't know the workforce to try to pay off a hundred grand worth of debt like how are they ever going to get ahead in life and what if that degree they get or career they pursue 
they end up not liking it and not enjoying it and they just get stuck right i just feel so bad for the system that we have in place for young people it kind of drives me crazy it's like it's almost as if we're setting them up for financial ruin if that makes any sense oh i i I completely agree with that like i i think that for a lot of young people they're getting into school um we go to school at such a young age you know 18 it's like you know nothing about uh you, you don't even know what it's like to pay rent and and yet you're going off and making these sort of i remember i was actually just stuck in a huge sort of like I don't know, a bit, bit of anxiety around like 17 or 18 years old. Just like, how am I supposed to make this, this decision? How am I supposed to know what I want to do with the rest of my life? Um, and then I think we go to school and we do get degrees. I feel like degree, like, do you know that system of like S tier? Like if you're playing a video game, it's like S tier character. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like there are S tier degrees. You know what I mean? Like there, there are S tier degrees and there are A tier, you know, A tier, B tier, C tier. And um, the, the lower you go on that tier system, like in my mind, those are degrees that are very loosely or not connected at all to an actual job, you know? Um, and the, I don't know. I feel like universities need to be a little more transparent about that, perhaps. Mm-hmm. I remember in one of your videos, you said, like, don't go to school for, like, um, what did you say? Business. Um business administration oh, go to school yeah, for like, like accounting or find like yeah. something very specific right and not right. something more general and broad absolutely yeah i i would definitely stand by that advice like go to school for something that is actionable and specific um it doesn't need to be business like i know like i happen to be in the business field so like i'm uh perhaps have a bit of passion about that but like I think software engineering is amazing. I think that even like um, like nursing, you know, nursing can be an awesome career path for a lot of people. Um, and then, of course, if you feel passionate about like being, a, you know, the, we all have that one friend who has wanted to be a doctor since he's like five years old or something. So it's like <laughs> it's like if you're that lucky person, it's like please, please be a doctor, okay? Yeah, I, we're not going to stop. Uh, you. Yeah, yeah that that's a that's a serious grind. Med school that is crazy. You got to be school. like so dedicated to do that, like to go yeah. through all of that. Oh, it's crazy. It's a it's a labor of love for sure. Yeah. Wow, that's wild. See, the yeah. funny thing is, um, <clears throat> for me, I never found my passion in life until I was thirty four. Okay. And right now I'm thirty six. Okay. So like, and when I went uh, to university. It was for computer science. Okay. And yeah. it, it was just because I went because I had to go. And yeah. it just, no, nothing good ever came out of it. And it wasn't until 16 years later that I discovered yeah. videography. And oh, that was yeah. my passion, right? Yeah. I, I discovered cameras somehow and making videos and, and yeah. just like working at weddings and at bars yeah. and MMA and just like doing something with a camera. Like that just made yeah. me so happy and i was like wow i finally found it but that was That's 34 cool. 34 years yeah. like imagine yeah. that how long it took me what like what about for other people too right right oh for sure I, that's uh that's i think that experience is so much more common than the person at 18 who's just like boom i know exactly what i want you know um and i think it takes a lot of endurance to kind of stay on the path and continue to kind of work out what it is that you're really passionate about what was it about like computer science that you, that you weren't vibing on um it was the canadian i don't know if this is a canadian thing okay. but when you go to university for computer science you have your core courses so physics calculus um, algebra blah yeah. blah blah all that stuff yeah, yeah but then we had to take like history sociology and all this stupid shit hmm. and then i would just bomb like bomb so bad at the at those courses and it would bring down my yeah. overall grades and end up getting put into probation and then yeah. to, into suspension because I was getting like 19% in like sociology, but I'm getting like an 81 yeah. in physics. Like it, like I was so math oriented and science yeah. and math like strong in my academics that I was completely useless in, in anything else. And I yeah. thought that university was meant for specialization. I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm going to go to university for computer science. I'm going to be programming C++. I'm doing JavaScript. I'm going to be learning about all these mathematical and science like courses. Right, but right. no, oh, you have to do all these elective courses. I'm like, what yeah. is this? This is like some shit. And it just it just right. killed me. It was it was horrible. Yeah. It made the whole experience useless. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really great point. Like college does seem to miss out on that um, 
that specialization that you would expect. Like, I think here in the States, like, you spend at least two years of your four years in university uh, doing, like, gen eds, what we call, you know, like, just the histories, the whatever. The general Basically, education? General, yeah, that's, like, called your, like, general education or, like, core um, which is basically a repeat of high school. So you would think that <laughs> when you get to, to, to university, you would have the opportunity to specialize. Like, I don't know, the whole, yeah. One more thing, I guess, to add to this that, that's coming to mind now is sort of like an incentive problem, too, that's, that's, that's wrong with university here in the United States. And I just mean, like, schools, the, the prices are out of control. Uh, and yet... Most people who have student loans, uh, those, those loans are supplied and guaranteed by the federal government. And so there's this cycle where like a school could increase their tuition rates by 5%. Well, where are the loans coming from? They're coming from essentially the same you know, institution, which is like the federal government. Oh, I see. And so the, the, the federal government is never going to say, oh, no, we're not going to give you out the loans because in a way, like that money's just coming right back to them. You know what I mean? Um, so prices can just, or they will just continue to rise and rise until, I don't know when, that we have some sort of student debt bubble pop or, I don't know. So. Wow, that's, that's so crazy. Like, what, like, what are you supposed to do in that situation? If, if your tuition goes up 5% and you're yeah. paying that, like that 5% could be thousands, a couple oh, thousand oh, dollars, yeah. right? We're like, definitely it, talking it's significant. Thousands. Yeah, it's huge. It's a huge amount. Um, wow, that's so yeah. crazy. Honestly, See, I'm, I'm was, always concerned yeah. about the U.S., man. I'm always like <laughs> wondering how you guys get your education. Like the prices are insane. Yeah, it is. It's. I honestly think a lot of people they're just in they're they are in debt for a very long time, and I was hugely blessed to be able to to walk out of school with no debt. Like that gives me a, a leg forward in life that is just like uh, it's astronomical. I, I cannot mm-hmm. uh, overstate that. Um, but I think that. Uh, we, we have we have to do something about this this debt situation because it's it's it encumbers so many people for so long. Like people are going to be sixty years old paying off their student loan debts. That's just that's insane. That's insanity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I've heard of stories in in America of people collecting social security while still having student <sighs> debt loans. I'm like, that's, that's fucking that's crazy. Sad. That's sad, right? Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. Like, imagine that your student loan stayed with you through your whole entire adult life. Until right. you collected social security, right? Like that's wild, right? <laughs> I can't and believe that's a be, thing. That's crazy. Like, and the, when they could be taking that money, like, like I have a lot of friends who are putting a thousand dollars a month towards their loans. You know, huge amounts, wow. and they could be putting that money into like the stock market, S and P five hundred index funds. You know, mm-hmm. um, and that money could be working for them so that they actually could retire when they're sixty. And I think that it's very. It's worrisome that a lot of people maybe will not be able to retire um, potentially in the millennial generation. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Mm, yeah, for sure. Well, let's talk about um, some stocks. What? Uh, yeah. So, are you big on the stock market and all that? Yeah, I, I am. I guess I, you could say that I am. I, uh, in in some ways, I, I think the accounting side of me and also the business side of me maybe uh, definitely has me leaning in that way. So, I've been. In, I guess I've been interested in in, in investing for a long time. Um, I don't know. I don't do a whole lot of individual stocks at the moment, um, but I do pay attention to the market quite a bit. Yeah. What's your What's your uh, position on the market or personal finance in general? Okay. So for me, I'm always interested in the stock market, but to be perfectly honest, I don't know anything. Sure. So what What I did is I eventually dropped out of university and I never okay. finished school at all. Okay. And so I ended up having like a bunch of, I guess you would call it disposable income at my disposal. Yeah. And I wasn't confident in my knowledge in the stock market. So I was like, okay, so what is the one thing that I think that will forever go up in value? And then I looked at Toronto. I'm like, we're not going to discover any more land in Toronto. Hmm. It's pretty hmm. much what it is, right? Yeah. So I'm like, let's just put it into like a real estate. And yeah. I, in my mind, I'm like, you can't lose. Because we have so much, so much people coming to Canada, especially like like an immigrant uh, type yeah. of country. Oh yeah. And Toronto is maxed out, and it has been for years. Like you can't build anymore there. So right. then I was okay. This is probably the best thing to do. So I became a homeowner um, okay. a while ago. Nice. And so that's 
um, been nice because you know the houses are going. That's another thing that's crazy. Yeah. The price of housing here is insane. Like that's crazy. another thing. How are kids going to eventually afford a house if you have student loan debt on top of that? Yeah. Right. Like I don't. What's the average like, price of a home in Toronto? If I can ask. Um, Toronto. I'm not sure. So I'm just outside of Toronto in the suburbs. Okay. So where it's okay. cheaper. So yeah. like a semi-detached um, yeah. three-bedroom, two-bathroom is one million Canadian. Man. Yeah. I lived in Australia so. for a little while after high school, and similar prices there. And coming from the Midwest, that is a complete shell shock. Like, that, that price, how can any young person ever possibly yeah, buy? It's, it's, it's insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the place I'm in now, I have one, one shower, and then I have a second washroom where it's just a toilet. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's like a million dollars. And it's like, it's, a, it's not a detached house. Like, it's connected. It's a semi, right? It's crazy. So it's like yeah. half of a house. Well, yeah. like a million Canadian is what? That's like 700,000 American? I think so. Yeah. Because our money is shit compared to yours. <laughs> Sadly. Yeah. It's yeah. so bad. There it's are some so trade offs for sure, but the US dollar is uh, extremely strong right now. And uh, might not be forever, but right now it's booming. Mm, that's that's yeah. true. So yeah. so how is um how is uh, life in Michigan right now with the whole uh, uh, U.S. jumping out of Afghanistan and your whole Joe Biden yeah. situation? Like what's going yeah. on over this? It seems crazy from my point of view. It is. It is. Yeah, that's a tough situation to uh, to speak to. Um, but it's uh, it's it's tough. I guess previously coming from the Donald Trump administration. Uh, I guess we're, we're, we're hopping right into, into some politics here. Sure, that's um, cool. I, I love it. But uh, but we gotta like. I think there was a collective sort of sigh of relief for for many of us in the United States, myself included, to to kind of come off the Donald train, um, mm-hmm. the, the roller coaster that that was that administration. Um, and with, with Biden, I think it kind of seems to be a little like vanilla. I think that's how a lot of people saw go, saw it, and it's like okay. It's all good. It's, he's, this is a kind of plain Jane. It's just going to be a nice, calm four years, you know. Um, but and, and, I, and I think that's held up more or less. But when it comes to Afghanistan, it definitely has some uh, like ethical considerations that I think have myself definitely thinking. And, and, and honestly, it's just been a complete tragedy. I think as far as the United States goes and our obligations across the world, like, you would expect that we could do that a little bit better. Probably, it, there was no doubt that that engagement needed to come to an end probably at some point. Um, although maybe even that's not definitive, I'm not sure. But like, I just think, uh, I think maybe in those moments we're looking for better leadership from our, from our people, you know, from, from the people who, from the president, from uh, the people who lead this country. So it was, it was disappointing, which is honestly mm-hmm. saying the very least. Yeah, like I, I'm fairly vocal with this opinion, but I I'm a huge supporter of the United States, and I know that a lot of Canadian people that it's, it's easy to shit on America. It's easy to it poke is. fun at them, but I'm For like, sure. at the end of the day, if someone comes and attacks Canada, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go crying to the U.S. because you guys are our bigger brother, right? So I'm like, yeah. so have some respect, right? Like have yeah. some respect for you know the country that's basically gonna protect us, right? And yeah. I always look at your political. Um, you know the system and because it's very interesting right it's Mm. very out there in the media and i was thinking donald trump and joe biden these like dinosaurs of men these are your best guys you got like there's no one better that you guys could have picked from like that's gotta be like the worst two choices you got like one guy that has dementia other guy's like (laughs) that shit crazy right i'm just like all right i'm like you guys are wild man you guys are so wild yeah (laughs) Yeah, like, you, you know how people joke about boomers, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like, we, I actually say this seriously, like, we kind of have, like, a boomer epidemic in this country. Like, yeah. and, and I know others have talked about this, too. Um, so this is not an original idea or an original observation, but, like, we have the oldest people running the biggest institutions in our country, which is a little bit questionable, I think. Like, uh, we have a lot of young, bright people. And also, like, I think at some level we claim, claim to be, like, kind of, like, mer- meritocratic, I think that is the word. Like, you're kind of, mm. it's kind of meant to be based on, like, your merit in the United States and the value that you bring. 
And it's like we have a lot of very qualified young people. And so why are we keeping them out of these positions? Um, there's something going on that it's not okay, I think. Yeah, for sure. That, Like, I don't know, is, is everything just too pol politicized and it's just st like stuck in its ways? Like, Biden just seemed kind of like this guy that was the perfect shaped cog in the wheel to just assume yeah. the role. And it's just more of the same, like business as usual, right? That That's how I felt um, yeah. as a Canadian looking from the outside looking in, right? And I was like, okay, yeah. um, for sure, probably way better choice than Mr. Crazy Ass, right? But at the same right. time, like, right. like there couldn't be someone like that doesn't have like memory problems, or, like the guy that like, can't read out numbers. You know, like these yeah. videos on YouTube you see where he's like stumbling with numbers. I'm oh, just yeah. like, oh, oh yeah, it's tough. It's very tough uh. to see. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think the honest, the, the hard answer is that there there were better candidates. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I'm certainly not qualified to speak to it entirely, but like, there's also this element of like. The Republican Party, the Democratic Party, they mm -hmm. they want to keep candidates in the in the, in the various offices that are kind of in line with like general consensus or things of that nature. Um, and I think like there was something that happened kind of during the primary, the Democratic primary, where there was kind of this council or or like conversation going on in the Democratic Party, and they were like, "Hey, we're basically we're we're picking. We're gonna we're." what's the phrase like king we're gonna king king joe biden you know he, he's gonna be <laughs> like we're gonna make we're making the call here and they they told others to essentially like step down like pete Buttigieg, and there were a couple others running at the time um so in, in that sense I, I think our system is a little bit either i don't know like a, a bit of a dinosaur or or we need to evolve in some way um but but also Maybe it's the very thing that saves us too, because here we are talking in 2021, and from 2016 to 2020, most people in the United States thought that you know basically we're going straight to hell. Like this, this like, <laughs> like, like the, the like the world is going to implode because of Donald Trump, because he was truly you know nuts. And yet here in 2021, the, our democratic process has seen us through, and we've made it out alive, uh, and we're and we've moved on to the next administration. Um, so I don't know. Maybe that's a net win for the United States. I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. I guess time will tell. Yeah, that's a good point. Because when I was watching like the prime, I, I, I don't follow it like like really hard. I'm still very uninformed when it comes to politics. Yeah. But when I saw Tulsi Gabbard and Dan Crenshaw, oh yeah, his name, yeah. the guy yeah. with the eye patch, I'm like, yeah, pick one of those two. Yeah, like, can someone pick one of those? Like yeah. they're. They're both young, they're healthy, they're, they're able, they're intelligent, they're smart, yeah. they're reasonable. And even yeah. though they have opposing political views, I'm like, any one of those, does any, like, can you guys pick one of them? Like, that would be perfect. And yeah. all of a sudden, it's like, oh, no, you can't pick Tulsi because she, she's not controlled by the Democratic Party, right. blah, blah, blah. They can't control right. her. She refuses to bend over. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, man, like, oh, you missed a good one there. Yeah, yeah. I think that we um, sometimes shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit. I like Dan Crenshaw too. I think he's a very, very interesting character. Along with Tulsi. he's reasonable, um, right? He's super su reasonable. Super reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, and and there's definitely something going on like with our politics at large, where like there's a lot of unreasonableness uh, in in the way that we communicate, and, and and Twitter has sort of seeped into the into real life, and and there's this uh, just. I don't know, intoleration for other people's views, maybe because of the internet, you know, if I, if I tweet something and you were to read it and you, you, you read it from a different perspective, like, you know, it, it'd be easy to think something of me, but then here we are talking right now and it's like, oh, you can ask me a question to clarify and I can see that you're not upset at all. And then, you know, we, we, we work it out and it's like, oh, okay, maybe we have different opinions, but we are still two decent human beings who share space. You know what I mean? We, we've lost that mm -hmm. bit of decency, I think, which is tragic. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's why yeah. I, I can't do Twitter. Twitter yeah. is just, there's so much like toxicity on that platform. And this yeah. is so much like rage and, and rage. hate. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just like, man, like the, there's nothing good that can come out of this. Yeah. Like you have these people that are on Twitter, like six, seven, eight hours, just arguing with people constantly, just <laughs> battling, just going to yeah. war yeah. over like yeah. political views or vax yeah. or anti-vax or mask oh, yeah. or no. And I'm like, oh, yeah. 
is this what we're doing with our with your time with your life like that can't be yeah. healthy right that seems no. so crazy to me yeah and to go back to what you were saying earlier like how naval says like how ideally everything would be ai and like we would just be pursuing creative endeavors it's like people are pouring their brain power you know the the, the most like uh critical thinking aspects of their mind into fighting other people online it's like mm-hmm. what if you poured that energy and effort into something that actually like was constructive you know right uh, or or at the very least more thought out like you know something that was original i don't know like that would be so much better oh for sure it's like those people that spend so much time and effort trying to scam you for your iphone like if you <laughs> yeah. put that much energy and time into something for the better of humanity like yeah. our world will be so much better than you just trying to scam someone's you know i don't know two thousand dollar phone or whatever the iphone Right. Whatever the iPhone costs, like I don't, I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. You know, the last thing I say though about uh, the United States and just kind of what's going on here is like, and to use a bit of an investing term, I, I guess I'm bullish on the United States long term. Um, mm. I, I like that. I think that we represent a sort of experiment um, in democracy uh, that, that was the first of its kind and, and now is represented in many countries across the world. Um, but the key word there is experiment and like we don't know what's beyond this um, in, ter- in terms of the, the decades and, and maybe hopefully centuries to come um, but I do think like it is the best system available uh, broadly speaking uh, and when I say that I mean democracy um, that, that's available to, to us human beings to, to govern ourselves and no, undoubtedly it needs changes and it needs uh, to be uh, tweaked in certain ways but um, I guess that's, that would be my final wrap-up note, I guess, on politics in general. Um, just kind of mm-hmm. keep keep the faith a little bit. We'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, I like I like that you're bullish on the the U.S. for the future. Because <clears throat> another thing too, it's like um, a lot of people outside of North America, they kind of think Canada is the same as the U.S. But yeah, that's not. true. You're not like no. I, I always yeah. try to remind people that, especially Americans, like you guys need to protect the First Amendment at all costs, because yeah. that is something that we don't have here. Like we yeah. don't have the freedom of speech. Like yeah. I know comedians that are scared to work in Canadian um, comedy clubs because you can get sued for things you yeah. stay on you say on stage, which is right. insane. But we right. don't have the First Amendment for the for the protection of freedom of speech. Right. Yeah. So that whole cancel culture, you're a racist, you're a bigot, like people can come after you. And there's been cases here, unfortunately, where a mm. comedian has been sued for jokes that he's saying in a comedy club and he lost wow. in court. He lost. Wow. Right. Mm. And so I'm like, that is a huge difference between our countries that I feel like Americans, you know, at all costs, you need to protect the First Amendment rights that you guys have, yeah. because that is so valuable. Because coming from my perspective, even though I'm not a comedian, I, I have no mm. interest in comedy at all. But yeah. from a logical point of view, if yeah. you are paying money to go to a comedy club, in a comedy club, they tell jokes. Jokes are yeah. not real. The purpose right. is to make you laugh. Yeah. How, how, is that, how are you going to get offended by that? That is so crazy, right? Yeah. And so like we have a lot of things here that are just backwards, man. Hmm. Like There's so many issues that we... I know like I'm not a hater of Canada. I, I love... There's a lot yeah. of good things that we have, you know, like we have great yeah. health care and all the other things that yeah. are they're awesome. But at the same time, there's some key differences between you guys and us yeah. that I feel like we need to learn. And like yeah. we need to learn from that and make the system better, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that thought. Like I think that um, Americans would do well to have a touch more collectivist sort of tendencies to, to, to their overall perspective. Like you mentioned healthcare. Like we have a huge healthcare problem. Um, we, we would do well as Americans to, to have a little bit more care for our fellow man and understand that like we are as a society linked together um, and there are certain things that maybe we, we really should be providing um, to some of our other citizens. But then I'd probably say the inverse for, for other countries, maybe for Canada as well, is like that strong individualism that's so American, like I think other countries need a little bit of that perhaps, which which is definitely mm-hmm. speaking out of turn a little bit. Like, I don't live in those countries. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, I can appreciate that individualism in the American spirit. That definitely is uh, – it can be powerful for sure. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not hating on the the American healthcare system, but also like if I were to go outside and fall and, and break my leg and I got to call an ambulance, I'm yeah. not stressed over some one thousand dollar ambulance bill that's coming my way. Like there's none of that's that. Right. Like I get no. transported to the hospital, they take yeah. care of me, basic healthcare. I'm good. I have a health. We all have like a health card that we just okay. bring to the hospital. And but but when it comes to like specialized surgeries. This yeah. is where Canada falls second place to the U.S. Mm. Where U.S. because money talks, you guys have the best of the best. The cream yeah. of the crop rises in the U.S. So you get like yeah. the best specialists, the best surgeons, the best brain wow. surgeons, and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And rich people from Canada they travel to the U.S. to pay for those top health like providers because like this it's like part of the system, right? Okay, okay, we're gonna the government is gonna provide all these services to Canadians yeah. for free healthcare business it's not really free right. but at the same time you kind of lose that top end um premium mm. like specialist type of thing right so there yeah. are good and bad but yeah. i still feel like if you fall and break your leg like you shouldn't have to be con- be afraid to call an ambulance you know like right you, oh i can't call an ambulance i don't have money for it like oh that's crazy like that that's seems crazy. so crazy to me right <laughs> that's actually crazy <laughs> Uh, let alone other things that are, you know, a very common part of life, like having a child. You know, if you have a, a child in the United States, you're uninsured, like, you know, that's a $10,000 bill or something. Which kind really? Of, oh, for sure. Maybe, maybe Whoa. more. Maybe, maybe closer to 20. I don't know. Um, like, wow. Holy and shit. that links back to what we were talking about earlier, like with student loan debt and how that sets people back in life. Like, here you are, probably a young person, you know, if you, if you have a child, and if, if you don't have insurance, all of a sudden you get this fat bill for ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Like, where are you going to get that kind of money? You know, that's half a year's salary, probably, if you're just starting out in life. Um, like, that just that just sets people back in such a tremendous way, I think. Wow, that, that's um, resonating with me because um, yeah. I just had my uh, first uh, 19 months ago. Um, oh, wow, I have a daughter. congrats. Yeah, thanks. It was uh, life changing. It's like one yeah. of the best things that's ever so happened to good. me. Yeah. And it's like there's no bills from the hospital for yeah. for my wife going to have a child. Cool. The only bills was we wanted to pay for a bigger room so that I had a okay. couch so I could okay. s- sleep there overnight. Yeah. And yeah. then even that, those extra costs were just uh-huh. covered by our insurance companies through our work. Wow. So there was no cost. Like we had a baby, we had had the what do you call it? the epidural the yeah. thing that reduces yeah. the pain. Yeah. I stayed overnight. We had a bigger room. Like, I'm yeah. good. There was there was no wow. crazy bills or nothing. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, it's it's awesome to have yeah. that, right? Yeah. Like I never I never thought about that. If you're having a, a kid, you yeah. gotta pay hospital bills. Holy shit. Oh yeah. Let alone this. Like this is your, this is kind of getting into the weeds here a little bit. But like, um, uh, me and my wife, like we're young, we're healthy. Uh, so we're, we're on what we call like high deductible plans, meaning like. We're comfortable paying a little bit more out of pocket if we do get hurt or sick or something because like we're generally quite healthy right now but like when we do decide to have kids we'll need to make sure that she comes off of that high deductible plan and goes to something else so so that we can like minimize our costs so there's like and so if, if you don't oh, have that sort of sort of knowledge to uh, change up your, your plan prior to having a child like even that could ding you you know and it could your, your bill could be more expensive so there's like there's so many levels to it, and it's, and it's just quite complicated. Uh, all insurance in the United States is quite complicated. Wow, that's crazy. And, and you guys yeah. don't even get that long of maternity leave, right? Yeah, no. That's very sh- – I mean, uh, compared to the rest of the world, quite short. Like maybe, uh, I don't know, three months maybe, I think. Three um, months? Yeah. And <laughs> I think fuck? I think – yeah, I, I think three months. Shit. And I think for the father, it might just be like – Four, like if you're working for a good place, like you might get four weeks off or something. Did you have Did you have paternity leave? Yeah, so ours you can kind of split it. So here okay. you get 18 months. Oh um, my gosh! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you get 18 months. But how it works is um, typically you get 12 months. Like okay. uh, I guess you would call it full pay. Um, you mm-hmm. can take the 18 months, but it's the same pay that's just stretched. Oh, so you're not, you're not okay. getting any extra money, but you can take the yeah. extra time off. And what I did is I took uh, three weeks. So okay. it, I took three weeks off of my my wife took the year. So yeah. she had 11 months, one week, I think. And then I had three okay. weeks. 
So nice. we were at home together when uh, yeah. our daughter was like a newborn, when it was the most difficult. Okay. Right? Yeah. And smart. So it, it's like the Canadian government, they incentivize you, like especially for parents, because um, yeah. we need people over here. Our yeah. population is like nothing compared mm. to the U.S. Like our population is California. Like our whole like, country, like 30 right? Million, Isn't it? 30 million people maybe? Or what? I think we have like 38 now wow. or 35 or something like that. That's... But it's like the whole population of California is all of yeah. Canada. Like that's our population, right? So we have a lot of um, people who immigrate here, which which is great yeah. and we need that. Yeah. But also the good thing is like if you're a local Canadian, like there's a lot yeah. of benefits. Like even mm -hmm. now we get like child benefits or we get money from the government okay. every month just for having a child. Right, so they like incentivize you, right? And it's nice. They yeah. they take care of Canadians and, and That's families. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, see like it, it's it's good, but also the the tricky thing is they get you with taxes, right? Oh, so like in okay. Canada we yeah. have really, really rough um taxes. People say, Oh, healthcare is free, everything is free. But then you look at how much we get taxed and it's it's pretty rough. Pretty brutal. Yeah. 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 So That's it's like that, that, it's a trade off, I suppose. Mm hmm. Yeah. And Canada is actually like flipping huge, isn't it? Like, like country size wise, like it's actually a massive country. Oh yeah, dude, it's it, it's massive. Like all the population is mostly by the border near the U.S. Yeah, it's like, like all the big cities, Toronto yeah. and Vancouver, they're all close to the U.S. Yeah. And then everything up north is just like wilderness. Yeah. Like, um, for example, my parents they retired a couple of years ago. Okay. And they sold their home, um, and they used that money to build a cottage Ooh, in the nice. middle of nowhere. In wow. a place where there's like maybe 800 people. There's like no <laughs> light pollution. You go up there, you see the full Milky Way at night. Oh it's crazy. God. Like there's Man. bears and flying turkeys and foxes yeah. and all kinds of crazy shit everywhere. I'm like, oh my God, what is this? <laughs> and like this is like the Canadian up north yeah. wilderness, right? Yeah, right, right. And it, all it takes is three hours north of Toronto. You just go really? three hours north. Yeah, wow. three hours. That's it. And then you're in the middle of nowhere. Wow. It's it's crazy up here. Do you guys get away up there much? I try to go once a month. Nice. Um, <clears throat> so I went, uh, was it last weekend? Okay. And then um, for me, it's like a dream for videography. Yeah. I can bring my oh, camera, my yeah. lenses, yeah. and I get my drone because up there, there's no regulations. I just fly my drone everywhere yeah. with people's cottages yeah. in, the, in the lake and over the water. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's, yeah. so, it's so nice if you like the outdoors. That's amazing. Let's talk about that a little bit. I, I was looking at your channel. Like your videography is really amazing, especially I don't know what you call that shot, but like when you, it's it's almost like an interview shot of yourself and you're like sharing thoughts. Um, I don't know what video that was. I was I was looking at. Uh, it was in black and white. Um, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's a recent. When video, trusting right? the process isn't working. Um, mm -hmm. That was really well shot. I like that a lot. That was cool. What's your yeah, What's your thanks, gear man. setup? What's your What are you working with? Um, so right now I use two Sony cameras. I have an A6400 okay. and A6500. Okay. So they are, I don't know if you know much about cameras, but they're not the full sensor. Okay. It's like a smaller sensor. It's crop. Yeah. Okay. But what that does is <clears throat> it's a lot more cheaper and affordable. So I can okay. have two cameras and then I have like eight different lenses because it, it's oh, affordable. Wow. So I, okay. I have all these different focal ranges i can get blurry backgrounds i can get shots at a distance i can get shots yeah. up close like even like this lens i'm using now like this this thing it's it's a zoom like oh, i can zoom wow. this right out oh, that right looks crazy. so yeah nice. yeah so so you can see like my my office right yeah, yeah. so like it still maintains like um quality Dang. so okay like i i got into the whole uh videography thing um and i was doing like you know like weddings on the side on the weekends yeah. for some money and then yeah. I was doing uh, gigs for like an aquarium and MMA okay. gyms and all these other stuff. And then I was like, why don't I just like start a YouTube channel? Like I yeah. got all this like camera gear, right? Yeah. I have like a GoPro and all this like stuff and I got the yeah. drone later. And so I already had like the technical knowledge sort of. In the beginning, my, my beginning YouTube videos, it was like just a GoPro. But yeah. a little bit later is when I got my full arsenal of gear. Okay. And then that shot that you were talking about, it's like a specific um, filmmaking technique where you angle okay. the camera at like 45 degrees. So like this. Okay. Okay. And yeah, so you yeah. look this way oh, and it gets nice. like this angle. And this this yeah. is like um, this is like a, a a framing for like an interview. This is how professional sure. people do interviews. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Yeah. And then you frame the person to the side a bit so they're not centered. Oh, and okay, then I'm looking okay. away from the camera. 
right? So it's yeah. like a style of of filmmaking, right? Because I'm nice. really into films and filmmaking yeah. and different ranges and all these different types of things that tell a story. Because I was like, yeah. most YouTube videos, it's like a, you know, someone st- sitting in their room at a desk and they just talk. And I'm right. like, let's bring all the different focal ranges, the angles, like two camera yeah. setup, bring the drone I and mean, bring all these things and put yeah. it into like a little story that I wanted yeah. to tell. And I yeah. felt like people would resonate with that. If maybe people would, would enjoy that type of content that had like a little bit more polish on it. But at the same time, that doesn't make the video good because at the end Mm. of the day, YouTube video story is still king and the information and the content is what's the most important. Right. So I focus all my time and energy on the story and the content. And then after I got that, and then I add in like the, the flair of the videography. Mm. Okay. Icing on the cake, right? Yeah. 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 No, I I love seeing that. I need, I need to, uh, Make some upgrades to my own setup here, but I'm uh, I'm literally filming on my phone right now. Um, That's fine; and, it works. But yeah, yeah, we'll see. I you do. I have seen channels though that are like just so simple, like you're saying, like talking from a desk, and like these channels are massive. Um, mm-hmm. And so I feel like I guess I'm trying to sort out what direction I want to take it. Like, do I do I want to invest and, and really kind of go that cinematic route, um, or keep it more basic i don't know if i were you invest in audio <clears throat> that is audio. the best thing you can yeah. like microphones yeah. like it doesn't have to be something like this like yeah. it doesn't have to be a crazy like this one microphone i have for my camera um this thing it's like 50 uh in us dollars it's probably 40 bucks so that's okay. like a road video micro this yeah, little yeah, thing yeah. right nice. plug it into your camera yep. but the trick is is to get this as close to your face as possible Okay. It sounds like super professional. It sounds so crisp. If you can get the yeah. mic close, like maybe yeah. like one or two fists away, yeah, it's it, oh, dude, it, 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 trust really? me, it's okay. like that's All what right. makes that's what really makes a video. It's the yeah. audio is almost, in my opinion, it's more important because people are willing to watch a video with sh- shitty video quality. But they're yeah. not willing to watch a video with shitty audio quality. Yeah. You know when like the wind is like and like blowing in the mic and it's right. horrible. People yeah, don't like, watch that on YouTube. Swipe up, right? Next, next. Yeah, yeah the yeah. video quality is not as important. So you don't need to get into this whole cinematic videography stuff that I do. I only yeah. do it because it's my passion. I love cameras, regardless yeah. of if I'm in YouTube or not, right? So for yeah. you, like, trust me, invest in a in a good mic. And find yeah. a way to get the microphone close to your face. So like okay. what I did in the beginning, I bought like a, it's like a microphone stand from Amazon. Okay. And it's just yeah. like this stick like, like uh-huh. this. And this part moves. And yeah. this mic is, is here. Okay. And I just move it out of the frame. So it's like right above me. Yeah. Audio nice. is like, okay. mm, the audio is beautiful. Ah, okay, nice. I'll, I'll have to get That's that all cool. you need, man. Just because yeah. I've seen your videos, it's fine. Yeah, the, the video yeah. quality, you're good. Just yeah. there's some videos where it's I, I'm not sure if this is true, but it sounds like the, your mic or whatever you use is further away from you. Yeah, so it doesn't have it that definitely crisp is. full fullness yeah. to it. I, I that's completely what's happening. I, I recently got a lapel mic, and that definitely oh those are good. Like mm-hmm. Mad improvement. Like I was like night and day, and I was like, why didn't I buy this forty dollar mic like three months ago? <laughs> But oh, you, if you have that, that's journey. perfect. You just clip it on yeah. your shirt, right? Okay. Yeah, right. Just clip it on the shirt. I, I'll, I'll stick with that for a while until until something else comes along. But um, yeah, man. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, because like for me, I've I've re- like here's the thing, I have a huge advantage when it comes to YouTube, and I tell this to people all the time. Hmm. My my best friend is a full time YouTuber. He okay. does it professionally he has like a hundred and i don't know ten thousand subs yeah and and my wow. wife even had a, a good youtube channel with like 40 wow. something thousand subs yeah so i have oh all these gosh. people i know that have been successful at youtube right yeah so i've, I've picked their brains and i've had like okay. oh what about this should i do this should i buy this like what makes yeah. it like so i have this advantage right yeah yeah and so a lot of the time it's it's never about the gear or the 4k Mm. quality or the the drone shots it's the story the information that is it's it's everything that's like 90 percent of the video is is that's why that's saying story is king right Mm. just concentrate Mm. on your content and the value in the story that you're trying to share and give to people and that is the the most important thing like by far by far it's not even such good advice yeah 
Mm. I need to think about story. I think a lot of a lot of my videos are much more how to oriented sometimes, or you know, sort of top five tips on this, that, or the other sort of you know money or, or study related topic. Um, but there's a story in there too. I need to think about. Like it, that, that's still good too because you're kind of catering towards search, right? Because people are going to be searching yeah. for those things, how to exactly. this, how to that. So those videos are good too. Like story, it doesn't have to be like how I tell stories. It could just be the way you weave information together about finance or about accounting or about savings. And maybe yeah. you give like an anecdote here and then maybe a quote there and you kind of relate it back to the main point. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's kind of all about how you tell the whole story of the entire video. And that's mm. what, you know, that's what really counts, right? Yeah. And again, this is like, this is not coming, like my channel is not super successful. This is coming from people that I'm learning from that have yeah. succeeded on the platform already. And I'm yeah. kind of picking their brain. That's an awesome there, resource. So. That's so cool. Yeah. And I, I always try to share the yeah. information. Like I, I hate this idea of when people hog things for themselves and they think that, oh, I don't want to help this guy. He might blow up and steal my shine. Like that sure. famine thinking, it's it's a yeah. horrible thing to have, right? And I always yeah. want to try to like preach positivity and help people out regardless of you know where they are or how many subs your channel has. Yeah. Like I always want to like provide that value, right? Yeah, that's an amazing perspective, man. I, and honestly, one thing I love about YouTube is like it's sort of inversely competitive. Like if you have five channels in a niche, say, you know, let's just say there's only five personal finance channels. If a sixth one comes along there, like all of those channels only benefit from the more content that's being created because people who are watching those five other channels, they of course will watch the sixth channel because they're interested in the content and it just, it boosts the whole thing. Um, and it's so unique in that way that you really, you really benefit from other creators um, pretty much entirely. And the sort of negative side of competition is not, not very existent, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I, I heard a really great quote from a content creator once and he's like if you're serious and this is a guy that has like three million subscribers okay and he was like if you're this is this is 100 percent serious yeah he said if you are serious about youtube and content creation you have to be better and do it better than i am Ooh. and oh yeah and i thought about that and i was like man so he's basically telling people to outdo him yeah but what he what he's trying to say is if you have that mentality to kind of like find your own path, find your own different perspective and find what's unique about your own channel yeah. and try to be better than those big channels. Yeah. There is ultimately, there's always room at the top for the best, right? Yeah. And that's, there, there will always be room for people right. that are outstanding and that are, you know, that deliver great content and great videos. There will always be room yeah. for those people, but it, it, it's up to your drive and your determination and how bad yeah. you really want it, right? I think that's a huge yeah. part of the yeah. whole YouTube process. I, yeah, because hanging in there, you know, when you drop that video and, you know, it just doesn't perform like you thought or maybe you just bummed out in general. Like, it takes quite a bit of perseverance, I think, to, to really make YouTube happen. Um, and even in terms of being the best, you know, I, I really like that thought. I think it, it takes a sort of critical eye to see, oh, who's being underserved on the platform? Who, who's not being catered to? Because I still think there are groups out there you know, where there haven't been, who, who are being fully served by, by content creators, which means there's room for more people to make things, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And then, and there was like this um, great book I read called uh, The 10X Rule, and I made a video on it. And it talked about how you need to set goals that are 10 times greater than you think. And mm -hmm. I had this mentality of, oh, I want to create a YouTube channel. Maybe one day I'll get 100,000 subscribers. Like That was my yeah. goal to get that stupid silver plaque. Yeah, yeah. And this guy's like, no, you need to send 10x goals. Ooh, and I was like, geez. okay. So <laughs> I changed my goals. And this is going to sound like egotistical and maniacal, but like my goal is a million subscribers. That That's is amazing. my goal. And it's something yeah. that I write down in my journal or I try to write it down every day. And it's something yeah. that I learned from this book where, and this sort of relates to be better than that guy. It's you need to like yeah. think big, think big yeah. about what you're doing. Because even if you fail, if your goal is a million, if you get halfway, that's still 500,000. Like, holy shit, right. that's incredibly successful, right? Yeah. But I feel like the, a lot of the trouble that content creators have is they create videos, they post content, they don't get the views that they think they deserve. They just put in like eight hours into a video and they get like 17 views and you feel like shit, right? And it's horrible. Right. It's a horrible feeling to have. Yeah. But if you have 
a clear goal and vision in your mind that I'm in this for the long run. I'm going right. after the million, the five million, right. the ten. Like I'm in, I'm in it for the big haul, right? Yeah. Then that is when you eventually become successful. Because if you think about it, if you want a million subscribers, how much effort do you think you're going to put into your channel? Like, yeah. I, like I'm busting my ass. I'm editing. I'm filming. I, I did like right. a two-hour live stream this afternoon yeah. for my channel. I'm doing nice. this podcast. I'm, I'm nice. have a video coming out on Wednesday. Like I'm, I'm like going after it. And I try to tell right. content creators that want to do it, like. You, you, it's almost as if you gotta gotta be all in. Like you, you can't just like half acid, right? And and, and expect yeah. to get the views. So. Yeah, I could not agree more with that. Like I, I I really think like I you'll go on these forums sometimes where like you're looking for like tips or whatever on your video or like critiques or these sorts of things, and like you see lots of complaints on there. But then you listen to interviews of people who have like these million plus channels, and it's all they live thought breathed about for you know several years to get it to that level or longer and all you know also the the level of content that they're putting out they're putting out you know two videos plus a week sometimes even more like it's just disturbing the amount of output that some of these people are are putting Mm -hmm. out it's like that's kind of life consuming but in the in a way like um any great business is kind of like that uh if you've ever read that book um shoe dog by phil knight um, who started no, Nike? Shoe dog. Um, such a good read. Um, but you read any other book of like uh, an entrepreneur who who built something incredible. It's like that's all that they did. It's all that they cared about. It's all that they thought about. Um, and th- th- these things, um, success like this, it's not just handed out. It, it requires a lot of grit and determination. Um, so that's uh, hopefully people find that encouraging. Um, because, but of course, you're gonna have some dark days. But you just gotta hang in there. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, cause I, <clears throat> I remember the days where I had 140 subs, no, 145 yeah. subs, and there was a day I got zero views, and then oh, I, ref- yeah. I refreshed, refreshed the YouTube analytic app, yeah, and I was like, I got zero views today, and I just felt like shit, and for all sure. of a sudden I was searching for like, oh, what's the best YouTube upload frequency? How many videos per week should yeah. I upload? You know, all this like stupid stuff that doesn't yeah. matter. Right. And then I eventually came to realize, like, man, th- this is not what you're in it for. You need to, you need to think about yeah. the big picture. Think about the long run. Don't get consumed by the numbers yeah. because that's what happens to everyone. You see right. so many channels on YouTube where they start, you know, they're in it for six months, nine months. They have, like, yeah. maybe 30 videos. Things are going good. And all of a sudden, they haven't posted in four months. Yeah. Like, what happened? Yeah. They yeah. fell off, right? They get right. frustrated. They get discouraged. Right. And this yeah. is, like, like... YouTube obviously does not want these people on their platform because it doesn't that they, they don't want quitters, right? It doesn't right, help right. their it doesn't help them get ad revenue. They want people that are consistent, right? right. To to keep right. uploading. It doesn't have to be two videos a week. Like I'm right. trying to just do one a week right now. Before I was yeah. doing three a month, okay. one every ten days. But just nice. be consistent with whatever you're doing. And yeah. I even know a guy who does one a month. Really? Like one okay. a month. One point four million subs. Jeez. One video a month. Yeah. What? Oh my god. But he's consistent every month. Yeah. Every month. Yeah. And this is over five years? Wow. Like five years, one a month. One a month, right? That's so impressive. Like that's the power of consistency that's that cool. people fail to see, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I've actually told myself, so this is like I love your million subscriber goal. Um and I I told myself I haven't given myself a number, but maybe I need to think about that. Um but I, thought I when, when I started the channel, which was in, in, in February of this year, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give this 10 years. I bet in 10 years, I, I can make this thing pretty lit. Like, I'll be like, <laughs> I, I, I'm 27 right pretty now. Lit. <laughs> yeah, I'm 27 right now. Okay, 10 years means I'm 37. Like, I bet I can figure out YouTube by then, you know? Like, I, I, I'll post every single week. Uh, like, that, that's, that's doable for me. Um... And there are no expectations beyond that other than to always be learning, study YouTube, see what other people are doing in my niche, um, and, and don't quit. So that's the goal. Mm-hmm. I think um, <clears throat> there is one hack, or like quote-unquote yeah. hack, that I think that okay. does work. Um, and this thing called the, um, I think it's called the yoink and twist. <laughs> okay. Have you ever heard what of this, this before? No, no, so, I haven't heard of this. So there was this idea from again a big YouTuber, a big, a big streamer. He had this um, he had this live stream where he talked about like legitimate YouTube strategy. And this was a part of the video where he was like, "You have to be better than me, 
that this whole okay. spiel, right? And yeah. eventually got to the end, and he's like, there is one strategy that works. It's called the yoink and twist. And what it means is the yoink is taking an idea from another creator that works in your yeah. niche, and the twist is changing it in some way where it matches your channel. So, for yeah. example, this guy, he's like a video game streamer, right? Okay. So his yoink and twist was he went to Mr. You know, Mr. Beast, right? Like the best yeah. YouTuber. He yeah. went to Mr. Beast's channel. And Mr. Beast had this video of this like little girl with her eyes open and, and a hand with a credit card. Uh-huh. Right? And it's like, oh, try to spend $100,000 or use my yeah. whatever, right? So his yeah. yoink was the thumbnail. Okay. He took that thumbnail and he twisted it to make it his own. Mm-hmm. For a video that was related to his niche, and I was like, "Ah, oh, so that yeah. so that's very interesting." Because what he's saying is, you'll find things that are successful, mm. and another big thing is finding videos that are doing really well on channels that have really low subscribers. Yeah, that's one so, thing I just keyed up on recently. I was like, I should probably be picking up on these trends a little bit. Hmm. You, you know what? I have one video. Yeah. I one hundred percent knew it would do well. I would have really? bet all my money, 100%. Wow. I would have bet every single dollar I had on yeah. this one video that I posted. Yeah. Because I knew 100% that it would do well. Huh. And the reason is because <clears throat> the video is titled, um, My Father Seeing Color for the First Time. Okay. And the thumbnail is of, of him with these, I bought him colorblind glasses. Okay. And I knew 100% this video would do well. Because if you search up on YouTube, people seeing color for the first time, you'll see these yeah. videos with... 10 million views, 5 million yeah. views, massive views. But yeah. these channels have like 800 subscribers, hmm. 50 subscribers, wow. like, like no subscribers. And these videos are just like peop- you know, regular people with a smartphone. Because yeah. if you think about it, people seeing color for the first time, there's, there's not, a, not yeah. a niche for that. There's no like, full-time <laughs> content creators doing that. Yeah. So I was like, if I do that, and I do that, uh. like yoink and twist, take that video yeah. idea, Use yeah. it because my dad is colorblind, but then yeah. have a really nice professional photo that has like the bokeh, the blurry background yeah. with my dad looking up with the reflection in the sunglasses. I'm like, yeah. 100%, this is going to do good. And you know what happened in, in like the first, I don't know, week, it started taking off. Uh-huh. It has like 13% click through rate and it's just going ape shit. And That's that was amazing. the only video I knew 100% that didn't huh. do well. Wow. And it's because of those ideas, right? That's amazing. I'll definitely need to look, yeah, look into that a little bit. I like that. Yeah, look it up, man. Yoink and twist. That's yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. That's funny. Uh, All right, bro. Let's uh, let's end the good. podcast there on the yoink and twist. Sure, let's we wrap. just did let's an wrap. hour. <laughs> Eric, uh, let deal. um let the people know where they can uh, see your work, YouTube channel, website, any of that type of stuff. Cal. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, YouTube just Cal Mills, and website is actually coming. It's uh, www.calmills.com. Um, and pretty much it's just a newsletter. So you can sign up for my newsletter there, uh, which will eventually be uh, once a week, just sort of things that I find interesting that don't make it into the channel. So mm. those will be the primary. I also am on Twitter, uh, Calvin TP Mills, if uh, people are out there. I honestly don't use it that much. That's how we connected, which honestly, bro, that was impressive <laughs> that you created a Twitter. That, that was massively <laughs> impressive. I'm anti Twitter, uh, man. I need a I business like, oh, email. Guys I, tell me Twitter. Honestly, man, I was just like, what the heck? I need a business email. This is ridiculous. Uh, I don't even <laughs> care about giving out my other email. I was just like, I don't want all these bots up on my email, you know? So, uh, anyway. So, That's hey, thank true. you so much, Derek. This has been incredible. Thanks for taking the yeah, time. Yeah, no worries, man. I'll uh, spread the message, spread the word. Hopefully, uh, cool. this podcast will gain some traction one day and we'll get some of viewership to your channel. Hey, 100%, man. Well, much love and uh, yeah, man. Nice. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. You too. We'll All right, guys. Bye. Peace, peace. peace.